Já vás tedy vítám na přednášce a následné diskuzi s názvem Irán protest a protesty a levice. Přednáška bude mít nejdřív úvod od Pažáry Hajdáry, následná diskuze a krásně na úvod. Pažáry Hajdáry je iránská aktivistka, působící v Berlíně, je členkou dílinké zima se o protiválečné protesty. Po, eh, protesty, eh, odborářské protesty a dnes vám tady představí svůj úvod ohledně eh, situaci v její zemi, eh, konkrétně tedy hlavně zaměří na situaci na konci loňského roku, eh, už pak prosinec, kdy se konaly eh, velké protesty proti vládě v Iránu a eh, hlavně se zaměří na eh, povahu protestů a vůbec, jakým způsobem eh, vznikly a proč tedy byly v současné situaci, jak když už tady tady probíhají a jaká je současná situace. Chtěl se zeptat nejdřív na úvod, kolik tady z vás potřebuje překlad do češského jazyka, pro vělikož ta přednáška bude v angličtině. Jak moc je to nutné tady překládat pro někoho z vás? Dobře, nikdo si nehlásí, tak jestli skutečně vám nevadí, tak bychom to zkusili bez překladu do českého jazyka. Kdybyste někdo potřeboval, tak já vám můžu průvodit, uh, kdybyste se jako necítili, tak můžu všechno Takže páně, v tým případě, kdybyste někdo potřeboval, tak, tak překvat je zajištěn, tak se nevážíte obrátit. Já myslím, že můžeme začít. Yes, you can start. Oh, without translation or are you going to translate? I'll be talking about it. Okay, so it's going to be very fast. Can I make a slide? I can do Um, in order to make sense of what ha what is going on in Iran now, uh, we need to go back and perhaps reread the contemporary history of Iran cont to contextualize the present moment. To do that, I like to start with the Iranian Revolution 1979. In the mid 70s, as a result of Arab-Israeli war. Um, the oil prices soared and Iran's revenue increased four times respectively. This gave rise uh, for high hopes among Iranians for a rapid and fast improvement in their everyday life. The Shah himself claimed that Iran is passing the gate of greatness and will become a great civilization. Um, He was kind of making Iran great again. So as you know, like Trump has said in his way. Soon the boom in economy, thanks to the rise of oil prices, saw its end and left the Shah with inflation and one of the worst countries in the world in terms of social justice. In words of Irish Marxist Fred Halliday, Iran was a sickening system of nepotism, bribery, and greed grew out of the rotten court system the Pahlavis had created. But which was made all the worse is the scramble for money that was unleashed by the rise of the oil revenue after 1973. In this context, the 1979 revolution <coughs> was, among others, a reaction to the unjust rule of the Shah his dictatorship and his pro-West policies. There were three major forces competing to win the heart, of the heart and the mind of the people in the eve of revolution, Islamists, nationalists and leftists. At the end, Khomeini, the le leader of the reactionary branch, managed to monopolize the power by dividing and conquering his rivals. Here I want to talk about the leftist stand and how their miscalculation facilitated the rise of Khomeini to power. On the eve of 1979 revolution, there were a leftist worker movement that put the final point to the Shah's reign with a general strike, particularly in the oil industries and occupied many factories in the post-revolutionary era. Moreover, they established several worker councils 
the so-called Shora, all around the country with the great potential of political intervention. Despite that, the main leftist organization, the Tude Party, the Communist Party, and the Fadain, the leftist guerrilla, turned the blind eye on this potential in the name of a greater anti-imperialist war that was led by Khomeini. So you can go to the slide. Khomeini used this firm support and the excuse of war with Iraq uh, to eliminate all other leftist organizations, movements in Kurdistan and Turkmen Sahra, and at the end, those two uh, supporting leftist organizations. That led to a mass execution and massacre of Mujahideen, the moderate Islamists, and the leftist political prisoners during the 80s. Um, in sum, the Iranian opposition estimates that the Islamic Republic kills around 30,000 in the 80s, among them 5,000 during the summer 1988, which are buried in mass graves. Um, this was at the same time with the end of the Eighth War with Iraq War, with Iraq that left one million victims from both sides. The imperialist forces, including Soviet Union, made vast money by selling weapons to both sides. Um, this picture you see is maybe too bright to see that. This is the, this mass grave in, in Tehran where these 5,000 leftist people are buried in. Um, yeah, because um, because there was something dirty for them, so they are not to they are not allowed to be buried in Muslim uh, Muslim graves, and they they brought them all there. The Iranian government is trying to destroy this place, but there are a lot of protests because they want to hide that the, there are these mass graves of the leftists. And what you see are the families gathering there every year in the, uh, in the summer the, during ten, these 10 days uh, where the, is the anniversary of the, of, of the massacre. So, so, can we go to the next? In the post-Khomeini era from 1989, with the leadership of Khamenei, a steady but continuous capitalist development and privatization of economy has been going on for nearly 30 years now. This is the mutual future of all the governments, regardless of their political camps as reformists or conservatives in Iran. What unites all of them is economic adjustments in the light of the World Bank recipes. You should know that Ahmadinejad, for example, we will come to him later, uh, cut prices of the World Bank because of his social cuts and privatization in Iran. Um, the next. This is Rafsan Jani, is the father of neoliberalism in Iran. He pushed for economic adjustment that resulted in the greatest inflation in the history of Iran. It was around 50% um, in, in, in his era. The reaction of people was a few uprising around the country that was brutally oppressed. It is not noteworthy that Mashhad, the city where uh, the starting point for the latest wave of struggles in the last month was also one of the main places where we had the, those protests in, in his time. So Khatami, uh, is the one of the famous reformists came to power agitating for poli political reforms uh, and actually there were some political reforms because uh, we had in, in this time many women organizations start, started to work and uh, we had the student movement and um, News, le somehow leftist newspaper and translation of a lot of leftist works. Um, Karl Marx's works, for example, were forbidden till he, he came to power. 
But um, at the end, uh, what happened in his time was, so, was also the suppression of student movement and also consolidating of uh, Khamenei's lead dictatorship. Um, the peop this, uh, the, this illusion supporters of reforms in Iran lost their hopes for a real change in, in this era. That's why this guy, Ahmadinejad, maybe you know his face <laughs> from the news everywhere. In this context, uh, he was able to emphasize social justice and got support from angry and hopeless people, particularly those who were mar marginalized by the economic policies of the previous governments. Um, as you can see in the diagram, maybe you can go two slides. Two slides. The next one, I want to show the diagram first. Just the diagram. Another one about this. Is the, the in this diagram you can see the all uh, revenue we had in 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 this time when Ahmadinejad was in power we had also uh, oil boom uh, like uh, like in the 70s as you see you see this the 70s and and the, the next one we had is in his era so Iran got a lot of money for for oil but um, his actual policy was even a harsher privatization and also a very hostile foreign policy um, that helped shaping a great coalition against the Islamic Republic. Uh, his provocative approach to the regional issues to hijack the Palestinian resistance and uh, to denial of Holocaust, for example, <laughs> focusing on the Iranian nuclear po program and many other challenging stunts by him kept Iran in the headline of news. But uh, one should not overread the rule of Ahmadinejad and undermine Khamenei, the leader of Iran, who controls the major share of power in the regime. The main result of Ahmadinejad policies was a public stress <coughs> for war and economic instability. This is why in 2009, maybe you can go one slide back again. Back, go back, go back. Yeah, this is, this is a picture of the Green Movement. <laughs> um, in 2009, reformists gathered around Mosavi, the prime minister of the 80s, who is famous for having a thing for justice. He launched a strong presidential campaign that challenged the second round of the presidentship of the Ahmadinejad. Um, as you probably know, the election was manipulated and for several months the Green Movement introduced the greatest challenge to the Islamic Republic, perhaps in its history. <coughs> um, this is the one of the, the picture. There were millions of people every day in the street for several months, and yeah, the regime brutally suppressed all, all of that. Uh, in the following years, um, the U.S. imperialism and its uh, European allies, which always seek a space for developing their interest in the region, used the dead end in nuclear negotiation and provocative agitation of Ahmadinejad as an excuse for imposing the historical economic sanctions that targeted the main parts of the Iranian economy. A specter of war, war, war haunted the West Asia that is fertile land for a politics of fear. This is the Rouhani, the actual president of Iran. He came to power uh, promising that he can solve the nuclear issue and economic sanctions that hardened the everyday life of Iran for many people. He branded his government as the state of Tadbir wa Omid, which means to have hope for a brighter future and to find a solution for approaching it. Uh, he chose a key as a symbol for his campaign 
to stress that he can open the closed door in politics and economy to Iran. After two years in 2015, Rouhani's government managed to reach a nuclear deal with six power, with the six world powers, the US, UK, Russia, France, China, and Germany to, leave, to relieve a part of sanctions. But the expected improvement was not happened, and the general trend of privatization continued. Rouhani stated several times that he can do better if he get more votes in, in, in the second, uh, second uh, period of, of, of the presidentialship. And um, this false hope and large campaign of the reformists to blame that people, not, uh, to blame the people for not voting them against the hardliners, put pressure on uh, on the people. Rouhani ended up with more than uh, with more, more votes, about 57 percent in the second term. And during his campaign, he radically criticized. Uh, many part of the history of Islamic Republic. He accused this, his main rival not knowing anything apart uh, from prison and execution in the last 30 years in Iran. But in aftermath of the election, he suddenly turned the other way because he knew that he only can be two-time president of Iran. We have only two terms. So, and... Um, for this reason, and others also, he moved closer to the Revolutionary Guard, to the oppressive arm of the regime, pushed for more privatization, and compromised with the leadership with the Khamenei. In this context, also, the crazy inflation of Ahmadinejad era is disappeared. The economy has suffered from stagnation. The post boom, the decrease of the oil revenue, left the government almost bankrupt. Many workers had not received their salary, salaries for several months. The government has reacted to workers' attempt for organi organization in the familiar way of the Islamic Republic, arresting the leaders and showing the iron fist to the others. So this picture you see there, this is Reza Shahabi. He is one of the famous um, workers' activists. He's, he, because in Iran, is forbidden to have trade unions. He's a bus driver. And he was organizing a bus driver a trade union, tried to organize it, but, but he's now in jail since three years. Um, banks and credits institute are falling down and many people damaged because of that. Uh, on top of all this are the environmental issues that threaten the bare life of the people. One can witness the failure of the state looking at rivers, lakes, dried land and empty villages. But more important is the lust of hope for people. The false hope to postpone the confrontation with the reality is losing its power and people. Also in line with neoliberal <coughs> ethics of personal guilt, all, all political parties and reformists in particular ask people to work harder and deal with these problems at the personal level. So if they say if we know if the rivers are dry, so don't uh, don't use so much water, and uh, if you're poor, you need to work more. So everything is something personal. Uh, one can and people, of course, we can they can feel powerless with if if they if they see all these structural problems. But for many people, enough is enough. There is no one left to borrow money and no place to escape. There is no hope and no figure that embody it, it. For them, no political camp in the regime is worse than the other one. They want to secure their basic needs as human with dignity. The protest started in Mashhad, or oh, what do you see this picture? 
This picture, yeah, we can go back. I can explain what it is. This is a picture of the. These are the workers in a sugar fabric in South Iran, uh, and this um, this factory is in is on strike since many years because they don't get their sal salaries for, for many months and then they stay there and, 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 and um, protest. Um, you can now go to the next. So this is the protest in Masha that said where it started. This is the second city in Iran that hosts the main Holy Shia shrine. This is a holy city. A holy city that represents the injustice in its spaces between the golden shrine of the imam and poor suburb inhabited with migrants, refugees, and working class people. Uh, it quickly spread to 70 cities, the largest ever in the history of the Islamic regime. People chanted many different slogans from condemning all pro-regime parties to ask for their basic needs. The main difference of this latest demonstration with, for example, the Green Movement is it's not in favor for any branch or pro-regime political camp. It's not about an election or a reaction to an election. It's a movement for social justice that opposes the increasing military expansion of, you can go to the next, <laughs> the regime aimed at dominating the region in Sur Syria, Kurdistan, and Iraq, resulted in more war and sec secretarian problems, while its people has to struggle for survival. It's against the large financial support of ideological apparatus of the regime from mosque to religious seminaries and Islamic propaganda, while there is less or no money for education, health, and saving the environment. The rage against the establishment in Iran is not yet fixed in, around any political group around the Iranian regime. Um, also, the Iranian regime tried to discredit the protests by claiming that the protests are controlled by the West. Then no wonder that Trump and Netanyahu also tried their chance for hijacking it. They priced this uprising for their own interest. But this should not provide an excuse for taking side with the Islamic State that arrested at least 3,700 individuals during this protest in the street or raiding their homes, particularly leftist students, and killed around 30 people, some of them in the prison, perhaps with as a result of torture. So if I had, in the, two days ago in um, Austria, I was talking about the, this uh, protest. In that point, I said that the protests are ended, but during my talk in Ostrava, <laughs> people were protesting again in the street in several cities. So I went back, went to the hotel and I was seeing the pictures and a lot of cities. People went to street and you see this girl was in the first day in, in Tehran when we had this protest weeks ago. He took, a, took off her hijab to protest in hijab and Two days ago, where we had this protest <coughs> around the country, a lot of women did that. This, this is somehow a symbol of uh, women liberation in Iran now during this last protest. It, it, there are a lot of new pictures with, with a lot of other women who took, took their scarf and put it on, 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 on something, and yeah, <laughs> it goes viral. <laughs> so, um, this is um, the situation in Iran, and I had I had some stuff about. I don't want to talk about it. But I think because in in Czech Republic maybe we don't have these issues. <laughs> what we have in 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 Germany with the German left. Um, so with some of them are um, somehow they call themselves as anti-imperialists, so, and and they think Iran think Iran is an anti-imperialist country because Iran is opposing U.S. So 
they don't talk about the protests, they don't support the people, protests, and um, somehow they are supporting the Iranian regime in this way. And there are also the other one who think that um, the in favor for the people there, there should be a regime change project or military intervention and even harsher sanction to Iran. So this all you can see in the in the leftist debates what, what we have there. Um, I don't know how it is here, but I will I will know if, 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 if I play it. So this is what I try to show. You can ask questions if you like, and I would answer. <laughs> Yeah, you have to, women have to do that. It was hard, um, yeah, the Khomeini did it in, I think, 1980, it was the year uh, who, um, when they forced the women to, to, wear it, to wear this. The women made a big demonstration in Tehran um, for not wearing hijab or for, 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 for talking about Islamism and, and this danger. And the problem is that a lot of leftist people said, no, these are some second <laughs> issues. First, we, have, uh, we need to fight the <laughs> imperialists and so on. And then after that, that, we are going to talk about women issue. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the Iranian regime could bring it to the law. And uh, women in Iran are forced to wear it. But since many years, I saw the pictures, and I know that it, it was before you had to cover everything, but now they only have the small stuff here. <laughs> and yeah, they use every situation to oppose it. Yeah. Should we talk about it now? I don't You mentioned the Green Movement before. What was it exactly? Uh, the Green Movement was in 2009. We had this election. Um, it was for the second round of the Ahmadinejad, and people were, were scared of war, and, and they didn't want him to continue. And there were this reformist guy, the Musafi, and um, it was his pre presidentship, um, uh, his, ca uh, his, his campaign. And um, the Iranian government, they manipulated the, the election. So the reformist guy is still arrested. The candidate is now in, is he's on home arrest. So that, that made a lot of people angry because they had hopes. They thought maybe things are going to change. <laughs> so <laughs> and then in the day after the election, they came to street. Millions of people everywhere in Europe around the country, yeah, as, uh, and it took, I don't know, three or four months, and, and the regime suppressed them, really, so. Um, it was mentioned in, in an article uh, about this protest that one of the women who took off her hijab was wearing a green bracelet, and uh, it was supposed to be a reference to the green movement. This this woman? No, uh, she had one. That one of them was very uh, green bracelet, and that it was supposed to be a reference to the green movement. Yeah, a lot of people because it's a suppressed movement. A lot of people also still try to bring this sign, or yeah, they want to free this reformist guy sitting in jail, <laughs> the candidate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I didn't see that the green uh, green movement stuff in the, during this protest. Maybe, it, but it maybe it was, it was <laughs> mentioned in an article. Yeah. So I ask, what is happening with the protests right now? I'm, I don't yeah. Know. We thought the protests are ended because two weeks they, it was suppressed. They arrested 3,700 3, people and a lot of lefty students. But two days ago, people 
demonstrated again. They went to street. So uh, it's still kind of yeah, he's, yeah, because you know their aims are not answered. The situation is horrible. So as long as this is their situation, they they are going to protest again. Maybe the Iranian regime, of course, try to oppress it like he do it every time. But uh, this is something surprising that is continuing. Yeah, I was two days ago. I was talking so the protest is end, but it's going to be there again, maybe. And then in this time, it was there. So. And when yeah. looking at it from the outside, uh, I'm from the United States. How, how do we know that my country isn't manipulating it, and that your country isn't manipulating it? I mean. Is there a, a way of testing for authenticity? Is there something to read? Yeah, there are a lot of activists who write it on, and they put their pictures and, and, and their stuff. And this is not, this protest is not, um, it has no leaders and is people just went to street without an organization or something. So, and they, they post everything what they have. So I think. That's why you can believe it. <laughs> of course, the Iranian regime tried to say it's pro-West and well, the USA is it organizing. It looks like a tulip revolution. Yeah. It looks like a pattern that we can recognize. <coughs> yeah, I, I don't know if it's going to be a revolution. Yeah, this is not a revolution, of course. It's too small for that. <laughs> if you want to have a revolution, the oil industry workers have to quit their works and and everywhere you need that, the, the teachers and so on. So maybe it's going to be a one. I don't know. So the revolution never says that it's coming, so it happens. <laughs> so, but people have, have hope. A lot of people think that's the end of the regime because so the people are coming to street without any, any organization or that anyone tell them go to street or do something. Yeah. Okay, so I want to ask you, who are those people? Are, are, are those uh, rural Arab people or, or city people or, or who are they? How many are of them? And I have a little bit different question also. What happens, um, you also mentioned it, the uh, nuclear deal, uh, which happened, and which Donald Trump wants to withdraw from? It. What happens if that happens? How, what, what will be the Iran's reaction? And Because uh, one of the foundation of the Iranian Revolution Guards is to destroy Israel. Israel doesn't want to allow them. So who strike first? Yes, of course. Um, okay, the, uh, two points. Yeah, these people who went to street this time, indifferent uh, to the Green Movement, these are really poor people from small cities. A lot of cities, I've never heard about it, that they are existing in Iran. Very small places. Um, and a lot of poor people. So it's not the middle class wanting political <coughs> reforms. So this, these are really poor people who want, who want economical justice, and so they, are, they are there for social justice. And so this is the difference this time. And about the nuclear issue. How, how, how many, sorry, excuse me, how many of them are? They, what? How many? Thousands, hundred thousands. Yeah, in the street, how, I don't how, how know. How many people are protesting? Yeah, I, I, some million people because there are 70 cities, yeah, all around Iran. This is something we hadn't in the Green Movement, for example. It was only the big cities. There were millions of people on the street during the Green <coughs> Movement, but only in some big cities. But you have this time, you have a lot of cities around Iran, so millions of people coming coming yes. out. And the other question was the nuclear deal stuff. Yeah, Trump made this trash like <laughs> other stuff he do. <laughs> and yeah, if this happened, it's, go it's going to be really hard for the people in Iran. If, 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 if this deal do doesn't work, they are going to make harsher sanctions. And the point is that the, sanction, that the sanctions only harm the people, the normal people life. It's not that the, that the government have trouble with that. Um, people can, can
cannot get the medicine and, and, and the students who are studying outside cannot get, like, get money from their parents because they are not allowed to have a bank account or even making money transfer. So even the airplanes who wants to go to Iran, they are not allowed to get enough kerosene, so they have to make stop. Um, so, for example, my, f my, f my best friend, she had, during the sanctions, she had cancer. She was a student in, in, in Germany. And I wanted to send her back to die there with their family. But um, the uh, Iran Air told us uh, they, cannot, they cannot do that because they have to stop <laughs> in Vienna or somewhere else <laughs> to get kerosene because it's not allowed because of the sanctions. So it would take not five hours, it would take eight hours. So maybe she will die in the, in the airplane. So this is something which only harms the people. The Revolutionary Guard and the government makes a lot of mo money with that and the black market bringing medicine to Iran because it's sanctions. Yeah. Um, if, if this happens, it's, it's going to be really hard for the people, and I hope it doesn't happen. And <coughs> Yeah, of course, Israel itself is a, <laughs> is a nuclear power, is the one of the own, <laughs> with Pakistan, I guess, these are two nuclear, nuclear or and India, are the nuclear powers in the region. And yeah, if you look at this, uh, that Iran could... <laughs> could uh, harm Israel, this is just a joke. Uh, Iran has no real power for doing that. Of course, he says it always, and they, do, they use it as a political um, uh, material for, 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 uh, for get support from the people. So as we saw, Ahmadinejad for denying Holocaust because he thought I, I want the Islamist power to, to support me. So. Um, we, ha we had the um, Iranian-Israeli circle in Berlin, um, who, and we worked also on this issue against war, sanctions, and, and, and this threat which, which was there. It was also because Israel wanted to, um, wanted to talk about war, it's better to, 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 to distract the people to talk about the war <laughs> in Iran than the Palestinian issues, for example, or the horrible economic of the Israeli people living also in Israel, so. People say that it was the hard, uh, the, it, w it was the hardliner in the, in Iran who wanted to start this protest to show that the reformist president is not able to govern and so on. But uh, but the people used to they went to street <laughs> without I don't know without any because they had a lot of months of um, not getting salaries and, uh, and, and they, they had hoped because they thought we had this nuclear deal so the sanctions are, in, are relieved so why is our life so horrible? Why don't we get the money or, or you know that because we had in one week the price of egg uh, or bread because of the inflation it was 10 times more so the people are just hungry they couldn't get it <laughs> anymore so they went to t t for protesting and they use telegram and a lot of um, social media for connecting and we had those protests in Mashhad first people went to street and then in other cities people also went to this in front of the government places and said so first we want more money and everything is uh, more expensive and yeah, and we saw it everywhere. It, it was it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> are, are there any restrictions on social media in Iran? Yeah, uh, two days. <laughs> the Iranian government uh, shut down the Telegram, the social media people used for for connecting and making the demos. <laughs> but it was only two days <laughs> because uh, they used yeah. another social media to show. Oh, the Iranian government is shutting down. This thing, so they had to open it again. So, 
they use Instagram, Facebook and everything and there are a lot of activists who also make proxies so if the Iranian regime is closing Facebook or shutting down some, some um, spaces they are using they use these proxies so <laughs> they will always find a way so things has changed really in this, in this point Yes, so those that demonstrations are still soaring, or are they over the peak, sort of? What's your judgment? If, uh, yeah, I don't know what will happen next days. Now they, it, yeah, two days ago they went to street again. <laughs> Today I didn't hear anything. I don't know. It's, it's going up and down because, yeah, because the regime is arresting a lot of people also, so... And they just go out to the streets waving their signs and transparents and... Say, yeah, hey, just chanting without the transparent. Yeah. They're just angry, go to the street and start chanting and then, and then bring a picture of Khamenei and yeah. burn it and, and a lot of crazy things happen. <laughs> Yeah. Are there some clashes with the police? Or, or yeah, the definitely. Guards? Yes, yes. A lot. Some violence? <coughs> yeah, yes. Maybe. Yes, yes. A lot of people are dead, also 30 people, I said. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. This definitely, they come with their um, motorcycles. The police is coming with the motorcycles and pepper spray and everything. And Yeah. But the people are beating them also. <laughs> Maybe I would like to know how dangerous is it to be arrested during the protest? Like, what can happen? What yeah, you can, you can, you can die uh, under torture, like a lot of people <laughs> did in in last <coughs> weeks. Yeah, just young guys who did nothing. They just went to the protest, and then we heard in, in that they are arrested and under some weird <laughs> uh, conditions, they are dead. <laughs> so, you know, they've been tortured and they are dead. And then the family get the body and they know this, this guy has been tortured. And we had, it a, we had it a lot, a lot of people. So You can also have luck. <laughs> if you are some, someone famous, some students, lefty students, you have a lot of <coughs> friends and comrades outside who are making campaigns uh, to get you free, so the Iranian regime is scared, and so maybe you can get free. <laughs> but if you don't have those, those connections, you have no luck. <laughs> Uh, what kind of sources uh, do you use to learn about uh, this, these current events? Is it only your connection uh, with the other activists? Yeah, on with Facebook and other social media? No, we have uh, we have also some some um, news website, leftist news website of my comrades who are making this. Uh, we have a lot of friends and comrades in Iran, and they put everything there and send emails. <coughs> and yeah, you can use BBC or so. And and uh, we have even a radio in Prague, the Radio Farda. But these all are not so lefty, so <laughs> you can't find any mainstream news and debates there. But there are also Maidan is one of the leftist places where I get my information because I have comrades who write there. <laughs> um, I'm sorry if I'm asking something we already answered because I, I arrived a little bit late, so tell me if I'm asking anything. <laughs> no problem. Uh, my first question is about the public support. Uh, is there a big public support for these demonstrations? Because you said, it, and I also read it in, in the uh, news, that it's mostly poor people who are demonstrating, so it's not just uh, political reasons, it's economical, existential reasons. Uh, so I'm interested if, if there's like a big uh, support and uh, and also because the reason is different it's like a really crucial question if, if, if bread is uh, becoming so expensive and so on so uh, do you think it may uh, develop in something like really big or like I don't know big demonstrations or maybe revolution or, or something I, I don't know 
and, and the last question, uh, you said that uh, we can also uh, cover the situation via some um, like mainstream media. Uh, can we uh, can we believe in what we read, read there? Is it like uh, is it true? Uh, what we read, for example, on BBC or where? Yeah, it's somehow true. So for that, they are not mali BBC is not manipulating the news, but they, they are not telling everything. So <laughs> if you want to have some more alternative things, you have to search it. So this question and the other one, yes, of course, is not. You have you have, for example, in Tehran, the, the capital of Te uh, Iran, uh, there were also a lot of students in the street and as you see the women and so on and this turns to also a political action it's not only the so for social justice it's not only for poor people in the beginning it was but after some days women came to the street students came to street we had a lot of fights in the in the university in front of the university also police went inside and arrested a lot of lefty students. So the public um, support is growing, definitely. And I don't know what is going to happen uh, in future. It's, it has the potential of being a revolution or to change something at least. So, for example, if you see all those women who started this campaign against the job, this is something which give give us hopes that that is going. It has the potential, of, uh, the potential of the revolution and a big change. But it also cannot can be otherwise. So the Iranian regime suppress everything like they do every time, even if it's harder than they did it in the 80s. Because you have all those social medias. If they arrest someone, you see it two hours later everywhere. So they could do everything during the Iraqi war with all those 30,000 um, people who opposed the, the regime because th there were no, no way so to show it and, and to get solidarity outside and, and, and to show the people what <coughs> happened. So this they cannot do again. But what is going to be, I now I cannot say because it's just some weeks and so we had some protests and we have to wait and, and see what, what will happen. Yeah. Okay, so, so what's BBC not saying? You said that they're not saying whole stories, so what, 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 what's BBC saying and those outlets not yeah, saying? Yeah, for example, uh, oh, okay, sorry. Okay, no, go ahead, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for example, about all those you know they get their money in UK for doing to for doing the news because we have a BBC Persian also I'm talking maybe about this part of the BBC which I'm which I'm reading uh, and I've, of course they are not uh, they are not neutral they have all political interests in Iran all those countries around the world so you have always you have always this difference between leftist media. Uh, which also talks about the leftist movement somewhere and you don't have it in the mainstream media. For example, I don't know if it's important for BBC that you have student organization or lefty students who are translating stuff and organizing and so on. This is something they are not interested in to, to talk about, so you can find it in other spaces, so alternative leftist spaces. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have one other question. Do you think that those protests could be uh, potentially spark sparkled by also the fact that uh, Iranian government is focused on foreign issue, foreign agenda, instead of domestic one? Yes, in, in also. Syria, in in, in so and so on. Yes, also this is also a problem. The people chanted also against that, against this military intervention. Yeah. And then you have it, Iran is, uh, has military intervention in Syria, in, in Kurdistan is a horrible one, um, in name of um, 
fighting ISIS, is fighting Kurds, and also in Yemen and in Palestine, and you know, you know, everywhere in the Middle East, they want yeah. to be a power, and people know it because the expansion of the mil the military expansion is somehow in the same la level like those in health or you know and and other stuff social social stuff so the people see that and and is also a problem yeah definitely could you talk more about uh, germany you you spoke in passing about how the german left is not able to deal with what's happening in Germany, in uh, Iran now, and your experience with that. And underneath that, I really don't understand what is De Linke, but I saw your name associated with that, so anything you said would be new to me. Yeah, De Linke is the left party, the leftist party in, in, in Germany, and it's something plural, so you have a lot of you have a lot of Stalinist people, but also new left and anarchists and, and, and a lot of a lot of um, lefties uh, fraction. You have all of them in the party. So and that's why you have also the those those debates. There are those Stalinist ones who think the enemy of the enemy is my friend, so Iran is fighting USA, so it's an anti-imperialist country, we have to support it. So they don't talk about the protests in Iran, or don't say we have to show solidarity with the work, even not with the workers. So this is something weird, because of, as leftists, you always show solidarity with the workers' attempts for organizing or protesting. So, and on the other hand, we have those people who think Iran is a danger for Israel <coughs> because of the German guilt. We have to bomb Iran so we don't have this danger anymore in this era. <laughs> so, this is... What efforts are there to change that? It sounds like a very in ineffective uh, combination of interests. Yeah, but you have also other people. Yeah, we, you, ha you, have, you have a lot of other people who, ha who show solidarity with the people in Iran. Um, but this is something between all, between all these sides. Yeah. Yeah, they have to always deal with all these both sides. So people who want military intervention and people who want to support the Iranian regime. This is really crazy. This is really crazy what we have in, in, in Germany. But there are also a lot of people who support. They are making events and de come to the demonstration in front of the Iranian embassy. So we have, we have also the support of, of German leftists. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe silly question, but uh, do those people want, want to... Um, change the regime or do, do, do they want to make the regime to make things right, like to, to bring them bread and to work and to salary and stuff like that? Yeah, this is, this is this in Iran you mean in the protests, yeah? Yeah. Or, yeah? yeah, this is something weird. In the beginning it was just because they wanted to have those change. And then, after some days, we saw, you know, um, <laughs> Khamenei is burning <laughs> in the demo, and they say both sides should go away, we don't want you anymore. Okay, and and this is something, yeah, it changed to, to a revolutionary point. In, in, yeah. So is it sort of another Arabic Spring? Or? Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very similar, <laughs> what happens there, yeah. And are any of the alternative sources you were mentioning in English, so you could recommend them to us? Or yes, of course, I can, I can, I can send you one. Yeah, yeah. thank you. There are some English spaces you can use also. Mm -hmm. and you mentioned earlier that uh, this was a really spontaneous movement, and it was not connected to any group or political party yes. or anything. Yes, yes. Uh, so the first thing is, uh, did these demonstrations somehow generate some faces, some potential leaders or some... No, they don't have. Still, and until now, they don't have. 
They have no leader. They are just people coming to street. And, uh, do, you, yeah. do you think it's a good or bad thing? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, you know, it's good to have an to have organization to organize yourself. So it doesn't mean you have to have a leader. So uh, you don't yeah, need a leader for organizing true. yourself. This is something which, if if the Iranian regime uh, oppressed oppress the protests and you don't have organization between yourself, all those people who are protesting, they, you cannot gather again if, if you do this. But on the other hand, it's okay <laughs> because they are not hijacked by any political party or, or you know, reformist campaign or, 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 or something else. But you need an organization, the people need to get organized for, for continuing. Yeah. Till now, it's just some weeks. They don't have, th they have nothing. You have, of course, a lot of those workers who try to make organizations. They are also part of these protests. So they, they are arrested, and yeah, but they are not the leaders of those protests. It's not led by anyone. And many yeah. they need their faces and leaders, like some people who uh, to be focused on some uh, like opinion leaders. I mean. Yeah, they don't have still. To, yeah, <laughs> they don't have. This is the difference to 2009 when they had two, two leaders, reformist leaders. No, I'm not allowed to go there because I'm a political <laughs> <laughs> um, refugee living since 18 years in, in Germany, yes. <laughs> How does that feel? Yeah, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, you lose your family, your grandma, your uncle, everyone. You cannot go there and see them. So this is not so nice. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, but I have still a lot of friends and connection. And yeah. What made you a refugee? Why did you leave? What? Sorry. What happened? Why did you leave Iran? Oh, oh. Yeah, because my family is a leftist family <laughs> before I was born, <laughs> my parents, so, and my father was executed also in the 80s because he was a leftist, and uh, yeah, we, we had to leave the country because of that, because my mother couldn't work and she wasn't allowed to do anything, and yeah, I didn't have a, had a, um, papers for go to school until I was seven, so. <laughs> This is this happened to you if you're a communist <laughs> or if you have a communist family. Does so. Germany take care of you? I would say I care of myself and my comrades are taking care of me. <laughs> or what do you mean, the country or? <laughs> do you feel welcome there? No, I don't know. It depends on where you are. So a refugee is always a refugee who has he has who is not welcome nowhere. So. It wasn't so hard in that time like we have the situation now in, in Germany when you have Nazis sitting in the parliament. But um, it wasn't also a good good thing to be a refugee, to live in a camp and not be allowed to work or, or um, yeah, everything else what normal people do in this country. So I had to work hard for everything. This is the life of a refugee. Yeah. So leftists means communists mostly. Yes. When we talk about y ah, also, Iranian. yeah, the, it, it depends on which leftist. All leftists are the communists. No. <laughs> but the new leftists also feel themselves also as the communists. I would say, yeah. not the Stalinist one, but uh, communists. Right. <laughs> Communism is something good. <laughs> Could be <laughs> something good. Um, maybe again you over already mentioned it, but uh, 
that uh, what was the reaction of the authorities, uh, uh, except for uh, oppression and, and uh, violence? Was there anything else, like uh, only the violence, state violence, or no change at all? They don't even try to, I don't know, to do something with the economic reasons or. No, nothing has changed. The only thing what the government did was to organizing a demo. <laughs> Uh, when uh, when you are working uh, for the state, if you're a teacher or working in some, some institutes, and your boss says you have to go to the demonstration, you have to do that. So <laughs> if you don't do that, you lose your job and you're going to be arrested and so on. And they organized such a demo. So a demo against the people in the street and, and make a lot of propaganda that's that these people are... Yeah, pro they are, <coughs> they are just, they violence, they are destroying stuff and so on, you know, everything, everything bad about all those people, so this is their reaction. And, but there was also a part of the, the reformist part also who said, no, people want to have changes and they are not supported by any foreign, foreign forces and we need these changes, so this is something new also. But the, they don't have power, the reformists in Iran, they have no power. Their leadership has 90% has, uh, of the power, <laughs> and the president is somehow 10% of power, maybe. So if he wants also, he cannot change anything. The system is, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> OK. Nemáte nikdo další otázku, komentář? A, výborně. Maybe one more. As far as I know, Iran is taking part in, uh, in some conflicts abroad, like Syria, Yemen. Uh, so how do the common people see this support? For example, the fact that there are some money going from the government to some conflicts which are simply abroad. Yes, they, they, they have uh, this um, in the Iranian parliament. They had, I don't know, eight million dollars. For example, last year, they wanted to expand for, uh, for the fight against ISIS. So people know it. If you hear the news, you know, oh, we are going to fight against ISIS in Syria. <laughs> And, and of course they do a lot of propaganda if you watch tv you, you see every day what happens to yemen and how hard it is and that the iranian regime have to support them and the people are asking themselves yeah and who is supporting us you are suppressing us and you want to free other people this is something something crazy yeah but they see it in the newspaper you can read it it's not it's not hidden so Na další otázka, a tak uh, bych vám všem moc rád poděkoval za to, že jste přišli. A požáre, uh, bych poděk rád poděkoval za její úvod a za debatu vám všem. A jenom uh, pro ty z vás, kteří by chtěli dostat informace o tom, co se bude dál dít, ta, jaký debaty budeme dál organizovat, tak tady u kolatého stolu je potom kontakt, se tam můžete napsat. A zároveň budeme rozesílat teda odkaz na video. A a třeba nějaké ty odkazy, o kterých Pažáre taky mluvila, takže pokud máte zájem, tak se tam můžete zapsat, jak se tam můžete koupit časopis Solidarity a nějaké další naše publikace, a za což budeme moc rádi, protože peníze za ně budou na tisk dalších. A pokud budete chtít, tak Pažáre tady bude ještě k dispozici, tak i můžete neformálně. A díky moc všem, že jste přišli a budeme se těšit na setkání zase při nějaké další příležitosti vzhledem k naší vládě, nově se rodící táhle znovu a znovu, jistě těch příležitostí bude hodně i na domácí scéně, takže díky moc ještě jednou.
Thank you. <laughs>